Hey guys, what's up? Thanks so much for stopping by my channel as always. For those of you who are new here, my name is Daniel from iosoundstudio.com. I'm a music producer and I produce for artists all around the world. And our goal is to impact the world with music and to inspire and teach others to do the very same thing. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to get the best out of your own vocal recordings if you're recording yourself at home or in an apartment or something like that. So when it comes to recording your very own vocals, there are exactly six things that you really need to know to get really high quality recordings, even if it's just from a home studio. Now there's two sides of it, but first we're gonna talk about the technical side of it. So the very first thing on the technical side is this, make sure your gain structure is set properly. That means when you're recording with the little gain knob on your interface, make sure to turn it to the point that it's reflecting between negative 12 and negative 18 decibels. If you don't know what a DAW is, go ahead and do a quick Google search or check it out on YouTube. I think I have a video for that, but basically it's a digital audio workstation. So something like Logic or Ableton or Cubase or any of those other ones that you might've heard of. So go ahead and turn that gain knob on your interface to reflect negative 12 to negative 18 decibels on your DAW. And with that being said, the peaks of the song, the very loudest parts of your vocal recording should hit no higher than negative eight decibels. If you're staying in that range, that should give you plenty of headroom for when you're eventually going to go into the mixing phase of your song. Now, the second thing on the technical side is the recording distance, meaning the distance from your mouth to the actual microphone capsule. So how far should you be? You should be approximately between three and six inches away from the microphone. You can get as close to about two and a half inches or as far as about seven inches, but you wanna make sure that there's enough space to get a good vocal. If you're too far, your voice will sound kind of thin. If you're too close, your voice will sound really, really muddy. Make sure that distance stays between your mouth and the capsule of your microphone or else you're gonna run into a lot of problems. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this term, but it's a technical term um, that has to do with the frequencies of your voice. It's called the proximity effect. It's an increase in the proportion of low frequency output that occurs as the distance between a directional microphone and the sound source is reduced to the point where they are very close or almost touching. Very, very, very simple way of saying that is with a directional microphone, like a cardioid microphone, which most microphones are for vocals, especially if you're recording at like a home studio. Uh, most budget option microphones are cardioid microphones. So what, what does that mean? It means the closer you're getting to a cardioid or a directional microphone, the more that microphone is going to emphasize the lower frequencies of your voice. Now that could sound cool in a podcast, but when it comes to music recording, you do not want that in your vocal recordings at all because that translates horribly, absolutely terribly. It makes mixing vocals extremely challenging. And like I said, also, you wanna have a couple of inches between the farthest point and the closest point to your microphone because very commonly when singers record their vocals and they're closing their eyes and they're singing along, they kind of move, they kind of sway a little bit as they're recording. I'm sure even now when I'm recording this, you can hear the differences between when I'm very close and where, when I'm very, very far. So keep that in mind. When you're recording vocals, you don't wanna to get too close, you don't wanna to get too far or else you're gonna run into a lot of different problems. The third thing in your song, if there is a very, very loud part of the chorus or of the bridge or whatever, do not just move back away from the microphone. Why? Because that's gonna pick up more of the room, it's gonna pick up less of your voice, and like I said earlier, it's gonna make your voice sound thinner. So, instead of just backing away from the microphone, sure you can do that maybe the first pass, but when you go back and you re-record those spots, make sure you just take the gain knob and you turn it down a little bit to an appropriate level so that you're not causing the preamp to clip or your DAW to clip. And doing that will keep the timbre of your voice the same, right? Because you're not gonna be changing the distance you're recording from the microphone. You're just going to be changing the gain level appropriately. The fourth thing, if you're not already doing this, please, 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 for the love of God, get a pop filter. A pop filter is one of these guys. It's basically a fabric screen. Some of them are made out of metal, but it keeps the plosives from your mouth from overloading the capsule in the microphone. A plosive is any sound like a P, a B, or like a V, anything that shoots streams of air out of your mouth. So let me just show you an example. With a pop filter, a P sounds like this. P -p -p Potato, people, people. But without a pop filter, it sounds like this, just to give you an idea. Potato, people, people. Now I'm not putting any extra emphasis on those P's 
without the pop filter. I put the exact same amount of emphasis, but the difference is that the pop filter just disperses that air and it keeps it from going directly into that capsule. So again, if you don't have a pop filter, please get a pop filter for your recordings. It's very, very challenging to edit plosives out of your vocal recordings if you don't use a pop filter. Now, pop filters don't always look like this, for example, most of them typically will, but oftentimes microphones will come with pop filters already on them. For example, this Universal Audio SD-1 microphone already has a pop filter built onto it, right? Same thing with the popular SM7B microphones. They already have a pop filter on them. And so the beauty of that is you don't have to buy a separate thing, right? Some people will actually take the pop filter off and they'll put their microphone behind one of these pop filters um, just for like a different, a different timbre, but they already come with built-in pop filters and microphones like uh, SM58s uh, or even SM57s, you can get specific pop filters for these guys that just kind of go over top of it. Similarly to how this pop filter works for this SD1 or for um, an SM7B. Okay, so that's everything for the technical side. Now we're gonna get into the performance side of recording really solid sounding vocals. Firstly, before you even press record, take five, 10, 15 seconds to remember the emotions that you were feeling when you first wrote that song. This is extremely important because it will drastically, drastically change the way that you sing this song. If you can put yourself into a similar headspace that you were already in when you were feeling this song, and most songs are written from a place of emotion, then it helps you translate those emotions into the song. And the emotions in the vocal are one of the most important parts that a listener will gravitate towards and will grab onto. When you're sad, for example, you listen to a sad Sad song and those sad songs typically have very sad sounding vocal performances right and then that's really important because if you want to keep an audience members attention you want to be conveying the emotion properly now if I were to sing something like hello from Adele and I were to sing it without any emotion it wouldn't be really convincing at all right if I sang it like this hello from the other side Right? That's, what is that? That's nothing. That, you're not gonna gravitate towards that. No one's gonna gravitate towards that. But if I'm thinking, you know, I just went through a heartbreak, I just, you know, I just got devastated, whatever, and I'm singing from that point, and I go, hello from the other side. It's different, right? There's a different emotion that you're conveying. It feels more real, it feels more honest, it feels more genuine, and that's extremely important when it comes to recording vocals. And the very, very, very last thing on our list is this. Make sure you're taking at least three recording passes of that main primary lead vocal all the way through, and don't focus too much on pitch, but focus as much as you can on the emotion. You really wanna solidify the emotional performance of this song, because again, that's the part that everybody is going to gravitate towards. Now I say focus primarily on the emotions because as singers, when you're recording, you can start getting really into your head, right? But if you're just focusing on the emotional side of the song, you're not thinking too much about pitch, you're not thinking too much about all these different nuances and elements, it'll help you capture the recording as it should be. Now, after you have those three passes of the vocal where you're focusing more on the emotions, then go ahead and punch into the parts that maybe weren't so good, the pitch was really bad, or maybe you said a word kind of weirdly, or, you know, then go back and fix all those small little details. Also with that, make sure you have good comps. What is a comp? Say you are stitching together those three takes that we just talked about. Basically, you take the best part of each of those vocals and you make them into one seamless vocal track. Make sure that seamless vocal track that you create, that's the comped vocal, by the way, make sure that track is clean. Make sure there's no weird abrupt transitions between where you took this part of this vocal and this part of this vocal. Make sure there's no weird abrupt changes. Everything has to sound smooth because if there's weird spots in that comped vocal and you send that to your engineer, they're not really gonna be able to fix that. And very likely you'll have to re-record that vocal or at least that part of the vocal. So just to save you and your engineer a little bit of energy and a little bit of time, make sure to listen back to your lead vocal once or twice before you even send it off to your engineer, to the person that will be mixing your song or even to your producer, because that will, it'll save a headache for you and for them. Now with that, that basically concludes the six things that you need to know to record very, very high quality vocals and just to give the best possible performance to your engineer and eventually to your audience. I hope that makes a huge difference in your recordings and I really hope that your songs turn out even better than before and that you're really starting to see an improvement in the way that you record your vocals. I will see you guys next week with a new video. See ya.